What's going on, friends? Sam Pred is back once again. Hick Micro reached out to me just a few weeks ago and asked me to have a look at their Mini E thermal imaging camera that you can use on both Android and iPhone. Now, it sounds odd, but thermal imaging has been something that I've been interested in over the past few years, especially in my main job, where we look to identify heat in redundant electronics that might contain hidden batteries that can pose a serious risk of thermal runaway. If not handled correctly, it can of course explode and cause fires. Now, of course, I have used thermal imaging cameras on the workflow of this channel before when we've looked at 3D printers. And of course, naturally, the hot end and the bed tend to be the kind of hottest points. But then also, in addition to that, how hot are the cables getting? How hot are the motors getting? And really kind of looking at drilling down on things like that. And of course, heated chambers, where's the heat escaping from, etc, etc. Now, models especially like things like the Def Racers, which are the little radio-controlled battle bots that we've come up with. Well, we're going to put one of these up against that and see exactly where the heat is being generated and hopefully understand a little bit better about how the airflow is working inside of those models to make sure that the electronics aren't getting overly stimulated. We've also got another project that's coming up and to be honest with you, how airflow works and how it pushes the heat away from plastics is going to be vital. So, well, let's have a look at the specs of this thing. And let's get straight into this one. You are watching a master at work. So friends, this is the Mini E and it's available on Amazon. And if you like what you see, please use the affiliate link down below. And for a mere 124 British pounds on a next day delivery, this could be yours tomorrow. So this thermal camera has advanced features for precise analysis, heat pattern visualization, which measures temperatures at 9,216 points, providing detailed insights. High quality imaging of 96 by 96 on infrared resolution with super infrared technology, which enhances real time images, reduces noise and sharpens edge details. All running smoothly, of course, at 25 hertz frame rate. It's got a wide temperature range capable of measuring minus 20 all the way up to 400 degrees. That's minus 4 to 752 Fahrenheit, making it versatile for various applications. It's compact and convenient and its lightweight design plugs directly into your phone's connector, drawing power without the need of a separate battery. It's very much a plug and play design. And once the app's been downloaded, you're ready to start using it immediately with no additional setup required. Finally, it's compact and a user friendly tool, which combines portability with professional grade functionality. So I'm testing this on an iPhone 16 Pro, but regardless of how good the camera hardware is, it's usually the software that needs to be top notch to deliver a great user experience. In the settings, you can configure various parameters, such as measurement for emissivity targeting, distance, temperature range in level and span, and temperature unit in Celsius, Fahrenheit, or Kelvin. You can activate hot and cold spot detection, which automatically identifies and displays the temperature ranges. Additionally, you can select a center point, custom spots, or even a line and rectangular zone for specific targeting. The palette option is another interesting feature which allows you to customize the colors or choose from the preset options. Under the image tab, you'll find the standard refinements such as brightness, contrast and sharpness, and also color distribution, which can be used to adjust for your preference. For the temperature range, you can simply set a manual or leave it in automatic. And in the advanced menu, there's even an option to enable Super IR, which slightly enhances the image quality. You can also rotate images and configure the calibration settings. While shooting in automatic mode, the system does recalibrate periodically and you'll hear the shutter when the adjust happens and it will also display it on the screen. So thermal imaging cameras, of course, are great because they're non-invasive and they allow you to capture temperature ranges and images without actually having to touch the materials. So this is the soldering iron that we got from PCBWay.com. Uh, you can pick yours up today. Link, of course, will be in the description. And we're just going to switch this on. We'll see where we get to on here. So we, we should be heating up to 300 degrees now. And at the minute, we are peaking at 299.9, which is pretty damn hot. 300 degrees we're up to now. So this soldering iron from PCB Way and the other ones they've sent me as well, you will see coming up in up and coming projects where we're looking to sort of do heat presses and things like that. So it's a really good use of measurement, certainly for this application. And again, thank you to PCB Way, your leading PCB manufacturer. Now, if you need your PCB projects to stay red hot, but also run cool, well, PCB Way has got you covered. From sizzling custom PCBs to keep you as cool as ice and CNC machining, well, it's the ultimate circuit breakers for innovation. So turn up the heat over at PCBWay.com. And once again, thank you very much to them for the channel sponsorship. So back to it now, Hick Micro does supply you also with this lovely custom little case there. 
to pop in your infrared camera. Now, in addition to that, you do have a USB-C to USB-C cable. And again, your phone might be slightly different or have a different configuration to maybe what I've got here. You also do have the old style uh, iPhone charger as well, which is... Um, I don't even know what they call that, but that also goes to a USB-C and then a USB-C to USB-C adapter. Now, one thing I have noticed while using this camera is generally when I hold my phone, I maybe I hold it like this. So it's kind of covering up the camera. So if we wanted to print an extension to maybe sort of drop it down here or even flip it around the front, that's, I guess, an option. Um, but I have found it kind of annoying and it doesn't translate. It doesn't switch the image when you turn it upside down. But... To be honest with you, as long as you keep your hand out of the way, you shouldn't really have a problem. Now, let's see what this camera can do. Now, one of the coolest features is the ability to detect heat loss, which is perfect for checking insulation or energy efficiency around your home. For example, here's a look at our hot tub. And last year, we added a thermal jacket to keep the heat in during winter. And as you can see from the thermal readout, the jacket certainly does help. It's holding in more heat than without it. But the camera also did show that it's not completely efficient, with some heat still escaping through weak spots. So certainly down the bottom of the hot tub and certainly round the zip. This is a great example on how useful thermal imaging can be for identifying problem areas that you might not see otherwise. This not only highlights problem areas, but also gives you the opportunity to be proactive in improving your thermal efficiency, saving energy and money in the long run. It also turns out that I was incorrect and you can actually turn it upside down. And there is a little button in the corner here that changes it by 90 degrees. So I can kind of have what I want, which is good, right? Bruh. Sure. But if you decide to have the picture in picture mode, well then your kind of hand does get in the way regardless. So a um, little bit of clever thinking around that potentially might solve that. But um, yeah. So during these tests, we also looked at a 7.4 volt motor, which is from a DEF racer, again with this camera. Now, during normal operations, the heat levels ran up to around about 30 degrees. And this is a great example on how the camera can measure heat and monitor heat transfer into materials like thermoplastics, especially those with lower melting points. So it's perfect for ensuring that everything stays within a safe operating condition. And that's great, of course, because it's something that you can't just assume by touch or by the naked eye. When it comes to 3D printers, though, it's a similar story. You can observe the non-invasive temperatures with the thermal camera. And in this case, the bed appears to be hotter with the thermal camera than it does on the printer's screen output. Now, there's a number of reasons for these differences, such as the distance between the camera and the surface, the material properties of the bed, like, for instance, heat retention, and the type of sensors used on the printer output. Variations in the surface, texture, and even ambient temperatures can also affect the accuracy displayed on the temperature that reflects the actual heat present. Even without direct contact, the camera can provide reasonable readings, although the accuracy can vary based on the surfaces, emissivity, and the environmental conditions around the object being measured. So the Mini E from Hick Micro, I've been thermally impressed with the overall performance. Seeing things like animals walking along and seeing the, their heat transfers as they walk is pretty awesome and pretty interesting stuff. And again, I've learned some things about my hot tub and the heat efficiency around that. So for £129, I don't really think you can go far wrong on Amazon right now and the links of course will be down below let me know what you think about this thermal imaging camera in the comments below of course and again we're going to be seeing more of this coming up in my youtube video so make sure you stay tuned for that guys we will see you next time thank you very much for watching bye for now you are watching a master work